Hello, Mathies. Welcome to Chapter 3, Quadratic Functions. We're going to start Part 1 of 3.1, which is Investigating Quadratic Functions in Vertex Form. So let's talk about what a quadratic is. A quadratics is a degree 2 polynomial. That just means that the highest exponent is a 2. So here's some examples x squared, well, the highest exponent is a 2, so you know that's a quadratic. This one here is a product of two binomials, and it's a quadratic in disguise, because when you actually apply the distributive property here, x times x is x squared. So you can see that I do have x squared there. Here I have x squared as well, right there, so that's a quadratic as well. These ones are non-examples. So x cubed, so a quadratic has to be a 2, the highest exponent, nothing higher than 2. This one here, there's an invisible 1, this is a linear function, so that's also not a quadratic. Now, quadratics, when we graph them, have a characteristic shape, and that shape is called a parabola. And this parabola is a U-shaped graph. So when we look at this parabola, it can be anywhere. It could be here, I could move it over, I could move it up. We're going to look at what happens to move this parabola around. I could actually stretch it out wider, I could make it narrower, I could also flip this so that it opens down and still move it around and still also stretch it. So we're going to look at all the things that we can do to that parabola and what causes it to move, reflect, and stretch. But the base function is just a straight old parabola centered at the origin like that. So speaking of the base function, we need to have a really good idea of what the base function looks like because if I'm going to tell you to move a graph to the left or right, you have to know where it started. So whenever I make a change to a parabola, it always comes back to this base function, y equals x squared. So what that means is I'm going to take all my x values and square them, which means multiply them by themselves. And then let's come up with a good graph. So for example, if I have negative 2, Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So let's graph that first point. So negative 2 and positive 4 right there. Negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. And we'll graph that point right there. Uh, if x is 0, 0 times 0 is 0. So that's my next point. And then if x is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. Ah, I start to see some symmetry. It's the same on both sides. If x is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So that's the beginning of the shape. So you can see if I connect those dots that I would have that characteristic U shape. So the graph would look something like that. So we need to know what the base graph looks like before we can do any kind of changes to it. So that's the base graph. Let's now look at some important terminology before we jump into how to change things up. So the first important word when it comes to quadratics is the vertex. And actually, this is the most important point on a quadratic. Okay, it's the midpoint. It's the point that changes, the parabola changes direction. So look at this first parabola. Do you see how it's going down, 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 down? And then it gets to that red point, which is the vertex. And then it turns around and goes up, up, up. Over here, this one here, you can see it's going up, 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 gets to the vertex, turns around, and it's going down, down, down. Okay, so this midpoint or parabola uh, vertex has coordinates x and y. So the vertex is a point, the point that it changes direction. Okay, axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is a vertical line that cuts the parabola into mirror halves of one another. So since it's a vertical line, it's an x equals equation. So and it passes through right through the center of the parabola through the vertex. So it's an x equals equation. So it is like a mirror and it's the same, it's symmetrical on both sides. Since it passes through the halfway point, and we just learned that the vertex is the halfway point, it passes through the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, and then I want to talk about max or min. Now, max or min is a highest or a lowest point. So we're talking about a vertical point. This is a y value. And again, 
passing through the vertex. So if it's the highest or lowest point that it passes through and the vertex is the point that it changes direction, it has to pass through that. So if I have a minimum, it opens up, I have a low point, that minimum value is the y coordinate of the vertex. Or if it opens down, I have a maximum y value and that would pass through the y coordinate of the vertex. So those are just some important terminology. I want to talk also about domain and range. So I call it white glove domain and range. It's snobby. We can't just say, you know, x is equal to this number. We have to have this fancy way of doing it. And it's good that we get used to doing it now because when you get into 30-1 or 30-2, you have to use proper set notation on the diploma. Okay, so for a quadratic, the domain, well, let's look at how we read this here. I've even color coordinated it for you. So it's read as the set of all, that's what the blue squiggly brackets mean, all x, and then that vertical line in pink means such that, and then it tells you the rule. x is an element of the reals. Now, because parabolas extend infinitely in both directions. There's really arrows on either side of the parabola. This is going to be the domain for all quadratics. So every quadratic that I give you, that is the domain. The exception, of course, would be word problems. But if it's just a function, that's your domain. The range is going to depend on whether it opens up or down. If it opens up, the range is a set of all y such that y is greater than or equal to the min. And then the set of all y such that y is less than or equal to the max. Still an element of the reals. So when we're doing domain and range, it has to be white glove notation, the snobby set notation. Okay, let's get into some investigations. So this is the form we're building towards. y equals a times x minus p squared plus q. So let's get started with a value and see what exactly a value does. So I'm going to take you guys to this applet. There we are. Oh, looks like I opened it twice. There we go. Okay, so looking at this, I want to investigate what happens with A. So right now you can see this is my base parabola. Y equals 1 times X squared. So I want to see what happens if I make A bigger, if I make A smaller, and what happens if I make A negative. So right now it's 1. So watch the graph and I'm going to make my A value get bigger. So I'm going to drag this along. So see how it's getting bigger? What was happening to the graph? Let's go back and look at that again. So if I'm at 1, okay, let's make it bigger. So watch the graph again, what's happening? And what's happening is it's coming in closer together. It's getting narrower. Okay, so it's vertically stretching, and as I'm pulling it up, it's coming in closer to the axis of symmetry. Now, let's put it back to 1, okay, and let's make it smaller, okay, so less than 1. Notice what's happening? It's getting wider. So an A value greater than 1 makes the graph more narrow, an A value less than 1 makes it wider. Let's talk about what happens when I flip this into the negatives. So these are all positives. So you notice when it's a positive, whether it's narrow or wide, it's still just opening up. Now let's dip down into the negatives and here we go. Did you see what happened? Positive, negative. So if it's a negative value, you can see that the graph opens down. The same rules are going to apply. So look at here in between zero and negative one, the graph's pretty wide. When I get past one, you can see it starts to go narrow. So the number of A tells us if it's going to be wide or narrow. The sign of A is telling us whether it's going to open up or open down. So let's put that together. So A value, and I'm just talking about the absolute value of A, the number of A. So if I look at the number of A, what it tells me is, oh, there we are, <laughs> absolute value is the number without the sign. So if I look at the number without the sign, that's what I'm talking about, the vertical stretch. So as A gets bigger, the graph 
gets narrower. So I want you to imagine if I could take a string at the end of that blue parabola and I'm stretching it to be two times its size or three times its size. If I'm grabbing it by the ends and stretching it, it's going to be narrower, right? So imagine someone was taking a string on the top of your head and making you two times taller. You're gonna go in and you're gonna be narrower versus if A gets smaller, and by smaller I mean less than one, the parabola is gonna get wider. So imagine I could push down on the top of this parabola and make it half its size. If I made it half its size, it's going to get wider, okay, like that. So again, imagine someone put a, um, a hand on your head and pushed you down to be half your size. You would have to go out to be wider. So that's what a vertical stretch is. The vertical stretch is about the number, not the sign. Now we can actually use A to help us graph. So this only works, my trick only works for the first point on either side, not for all the points, just the first point on, on either side. So on a normal graph, on a normal parabola, we started at 0, 0, and remember my point was 1 and 1, and this was when it was y equals to 1 times x squared. So I move over 1 in both directions, and because a is 1, I move up 1 and up 1, and that's how I know that that's the direction of my graph. Now, that's how I do it for the base graph, right here, the base graph. Let's look at what happens for y equals to 3x squared. So I'm just going to change my color here so you can see the difference. So I've already shown you that because a is greater than 1, it's going to be a narrow graph. Let's look why. So using the rules of a, so I start at my origin, I move over 1, but this time I move up 1, 2, 3. And you see how my next point when I connect it, it's narrower than my original graph. Move over one in this direction and one, two, three in this direction. And you can see, yes, it is a narrower graph. Let's look at the next one where a is equal to a half. So I move over one and then I'm only gonna move up a half. Over one and only up a half. And you can see when I connect the dots, it is in fact a wider graph. So you can use this little trick just to graph the point on either side of the vertex. Okay, now we talked about positive versus negative. So if A is positive, the graph opens up and has a min. So here's how I remember that. If A is positive, well, positive people like to smile. So if A is positive, it opens up like a smile and has a minimum or a low point. Now, if A is negative, the parabola we saw opens down. Since it opens down, it has a maximum. So how I remember this is if A is negative, well, negative people tend to frown. So that's how I remember that it opens down. Oh, that rhymes, frown and down. There you go. Okay, so mapping notation. This might be new to you guys. Mapping notation is literally instructions from point to point. So if I take any point on my base graph, x, y, and I do a vertical stretch or a reflection, what the points are going to look like is x and a, y. So notice that x stays the same, it's just the y value that changes. So the y value might become three times bigger, half as big, it might be positive because it opens up, or it might be negative because it opens down. So when it comes to the a value, it only affects y. So let's use this to predict how each graph will look. So if I have y equals 4x squared versus y equals 1 fifth x squared, well, first of all, both of them are positive, so I know they're going to open up. The number in front is going to tell me if I have a vertical stretch or a vertical compression, like am I getting wider or narrower? Well, when I have 4, that's greater than 1, so I know it's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 4, so the graph is narrower. So let's just plot a point. So I'm going to put my origin right here and I'm going to use that little trick I showed you. I'm going to move over one in each direction and up four. One, two, three, four. So it should pass through that point. Over one and up. One, two, three, four. So my graph should go through those points there. So I'll just erase these so it's a little bit neater. There we go. 
Okay, so that should be this graph here. Let's look at our next graph. So this one here is one fifth. So this should be a vertical stretch by a factor of one fifth. So the graph should be wider. So I'm starting at my origin and I'm going to go over one in each direction and up a fifth. Well, one over five is like 0.2. So this isn't gonna be exact, but at least it'll give you kind of an idea. So it looks like maybe that would be my point. So I'll just erase the other ones there. So that should be the shape of my graph. So let's see if that matches. Here's four X squared. Oh, let's see if I can get that to work again. There we are. And yeah, I was pretty good on those points. Okay, and let's look how good I was with the one-fifth. And there's one-fifth. Okay, my points weren't awesome, but it was in the general vicinity. So you can see that the four is a narrow graph and the one-fifth is a wide graph. Let's throw some negatives in the mix. So as soon as you see a negative, you know that there has been a reflection. So I know both of these graphs are going to open down. And now let's look at the number part. So the number part is going to tell me my vertical stretch. Now please don't say that your vertical stretch is negative. Vertical stretches are always positive. The negative just tells me if I open up or down, in this case down. So here's how I would write this. I would say it's reflected in the x-axis, that's the negative part, and the vertical stretch is by a factor of three quarters, not negative three quarters. So let's go ahead and graph this guy. So, oops. I caramba. There we go. Okay. So I'm trying to turn my pen on. There we are. Okay. So I'm going to graph that one. So starting at zero, I'm still moving over one in each direction. And because it's negative, I'm going to move down three quarters. So let's see if I can do a better job on this one. Okay. So it'd be like that. So I'll erase my little reference points. So that should be the graph right there. Let's try negative 9x squared. So for negative 9x squared, here's what I would say. I would say it's reflected in the x-axis and it has a vertical stretch by a factor of 9. Notice I didn't say a vertical stretch by a factor of negative 9. It's just of 9 and the graph is more narrow. So looking at this graph here, let's do that. So starting at the origin, I move over one in each direction, and I'm going to move down nine units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right there. And I know this one will be symmetrical. So let me just erase my reference points there. So that should be the graph of negative nine X squared. Okay, let's see how well I did. So I'm gonna go back up here, and I'm gonna grab this graph here, if it'll let me. Oop, let's try that again. Oh, there we go, pretty good. And then we'll grab this one here. And there we go, okay? So you can see the value of A affects the vertical stretch, and it also affects whether it opens up or down. So this is first part of the video, the effects of A. In my next video, I'm going to talk about the effects of P and Q. So I hope this video helped, and I'll see you right away for the next one.